i is my identity matrix here so using all these mathematical formulae we can find out the values of lambda 1 and lambda 2 for these equations now each eigen vector contains p values which represent the contribution of each variable towards the principal axis and always remember that eigen vectors are uncorrelated that is their cross product is always zero so if i take the cross product you can see it is always zero here so this can be extended to p variables pc1 displays 76.5 of the total variance and pc2 rep represents the other remaining part from 100% so i could have a higher dimension which is now mapped to maybe 10 axes so 10 eigen values have been derived and the percent of variance for each and every eigen vector is shown here compromise and take first four or first five depending on the accuracy that we want and go ahead with our calculations now how many axes are needed typically what we do is there's a rule of the thumb where pca is based on correlations in which axes with eigen greater than when one are worth interpreting so we generally stop here and we take the first four now moving on to the face recognition part of this so we could change images as a feature vector here so what i'm trying to do is i have each and every pixel here as a feature vector and each pixel value is a coordinate of x so what we have if this this is a hundred Im pixel image where which is 10 pixel into 10 pixel i would have 100 features for each and every pixel intensity value here there's an incoming image here and i want to map it to the existing database that i have so what i would do is i would just try to find out how this is spread across all these feature vectors that i already have and try to match the each and every feature vector with the feature vectors of the database images that i have so r1 and r2 would have a feature vector space for each and every dimension here and i would find out that i which is incoming is having mis minimum distance with r1 actually and that is why we would have a match here so we we'll, let's see all that in detail now now if i have if i try to work on the original images itself my generally 100 cross 100 image would uh, result into 10000 pixels for just one image and then having such 50 images i would have 5 lakh such pixels and to be able to map each and every pixel in the intensity space would take up so much of time and space so what we do is we apply the principal components on these feature vectors and we reduce the dimensions so what we have is without reduction storing just 20 images of 100 cross 100 size would actually need so much of features so let us first look at this idea of actually being able to take an image and find out its eigen images to be able to reconstruct an image using MATLAB. So here we first start off with the PCA code here. So I'm reading an image called papers.png image which is a, an RGB image of the size 384 cross 512 clause 3 that is one plane for the RGB each. Then I uh, create this gray image out of this. So I just use the inbuilt command RGB to gray on this particular image. And I also create a double of this by just creating the IM to double here. Once this is done, then I, we just see this image. And we also then find out the mean of this image. So the data mean would actually result in a 1 cross 512 matrix, which is a row vector in which all the 512 values will give the mean of that particular column that we are talking about. We store this value of gray that we had image into the variables a and b a would have the number of rows and b would have the number of columns and then we create a column matrix with all the rows equal to the mean value which was calculated here so i have a uh, data mean new of the dimensions 382 cross 512 with all the values equal to the mean value here now my data adjust so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to subtract the mean value from the original value so we had calculated the means here and we are subtracting these values from the original data so we had done the same thing here we had subtracted the mean from each and every value here so the same thing is done here now we see this data which is adjusted then we find out the covariance of this so the next step again in our algorithm was to be able to compute the covariance after this we calculate the eigenvectors which is an inbuilt function in MATLAB 
to be able to find out the eigenvectors from this covariance matrix that we have and the dimensions are stored in the V and D. Now, I, after finding out the eigenvalues, we find out the transpose of both these matrices. This is basically done to be able to man manipulate the matrices for multiplication in MATLAB because number of rows in the first should be equal to number of columns in the other. So that's why we do this. And then we find out the final data, which is basically the V transform into the data adjusted transform that we've got here. So after this, we have found out the data for our eigenvalues. Now to be able to operate the inverse, so let us see how this runs. It is asking for number of PC columns. So suppose I want to retain just 12 columns. This is the kind of image that I am able to generate with my reduced PC here, reduced V, is v here as 500 clause 12. So we have just taken 12 principal components to be able to generate this image and this is the image that we get. So looking at the further code here, if I start with the original data, we are basically trying to just reverse the entire process to be able to get the original data from the eigenvectors that we got here. So we just take the inverse of V transform which we took here, multiply it with the final data. So this is like getting the data adjust transformed value. Once this is got, we take the transpose and since we had subtracted the mean from this, we add the mean again to this to be able to get the original data. So this is image that we had which is original image. This is what we have. This is the data adjust image which is the basically the original image minus the mean value. So this is data adjust over here and then this is what we are getting. If we are able to just inverse the PCA, we get the original data. We are not reducing the dimensions of the eigenvectors in this case. We are taking all the eigenvectors so we are able to recreate this entire image. Now if I do want to perform image compression in this, I just ask for the number of PC columns which are needed to be retrieved. Here I am subtracting this number from the value B. B is the number of columns that I had. So initially I had 512 columns. Now suppose I just want to retain 12 columns, then 500 columns here would be the value of PCs now and I would iterate from 1 to 500 and just keep on reducing the dimension of my reduced V. So you could see here reduced V is of the size 512 clause 12 when I entered 12 here. Again we could take another value to be able to see this and this is what I am able to recreate with 20 columns retained. So after this y is found out by just taking this reduced v and we take the transpose of this and we multiply it with our adjusted transform that we have. Now compressed data is now basically this into the y value and we are getting this new data by just adding the mean value to it. So effectively what I am able to do is if I am looking at 20 eigenvectors, I am just taking the first 20 eigenvectors, I am finding out their variance, adding them up and then adding the mean to it and then seeing my compressed image. If I take 50 eigenvalues, then you can see it's much closer to what the original image was. If I take say about 65 values, nice replication of the initial data. So my first 65 eigenvectors are sufficient to be able to get the original data. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.